welcome to a new episode of the Wooly Thistle. I think this is episode 180, mm -hmm. Maggie. That's amazing. This is my wonderful co-host, Maggie. She's our marketing extraordinaire here at the <laughs> Wooly Thistle. I'm Corinne. I own the Wooly Thistle and we love bringing you this shopcast every other week. And Grady has been bringing you the odd Facebook Live and she just did yeah. one on Friday and she's doing a great job. So if you want more of the Wooly Thistle, check out our Facebook group because you can see a recording with Grady there. Um, how are you doing? Good. Yeah? Good. This uh, It's been cooler here in We're, New Hampshire yeah. and um, it was so nice to be able to put on sweaters. I know and it'd be appropriate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and not be sweating. <laughs> I know, I know. Do you want to tell us right away what you're wearing? Sure. I didn't think this morning I was going through the closet and I'm like, I don't think I've worn this on the shop guest. Is that, is that right? Because it's beautiful. Yeah, I don't think I've worn it before. It's amazing. Tell us all about it. So this is the Shifty mm -hmm. by Andrea Mowry yeah. and mine is knit um, completely out of hand spun. Which is phenomenal. So, um, Gorgeous. I, it, I, I had a, all the fibers are from Hello Yarn. Um, yeah. I did her fiber club a couple years ago and I had quite the stash. And then when lockdowns hit for COVID, I'm like, now's the time. <laughs> so wait, to spin it all? Or... To spin it all. So and I that's spun it all. Did? And um, oh my gosh, it, all. it is absolutely beautiful. Did you think very much about the colors when you put it together? I did not too much. So I spun it when I, because I bought, she has something called grab bags that occasionally she'll put together and it's different ends. So it's all mixes of fibers. Yeah. And, um, I don't think I really had to dip into the club colorways that I had, but huh. I mostly used like, because it was like a one pound bag, right? Um, which is a considerable amount. And because it's all from the same dyer, all the colors played really well together. Her so color you, palette. So you were, when you were knitting, were able to just sort of go with whatever? Yeah. So I picked enough, as I was spinning them, I spun them sort of in color families or mm -hmm. groups. Um, she had like little balls in there. So I spun usually each of those pretty separate um, if there were colors that were close and not a lot together I would batch them yep um but and yeah, you did all and this then, on your wheel right this isn't drop yeah no yeah. I did this all on my wheel I yeah. have seen people spin sweater quantities on their drop spindles and, yeah in um, fact did Caitlin do that or am I dreaming that up I don't I don't know I don't remember her Caitlin you'll need to tell us a spindle spun <laughs> sweater that's um, just but I know incredible. that there are people who just love spindles yeah and, um I do more dropping than me, spinning <laughs> Um, yeah. more dropping than it's true. You gotta practice. <laughs> um, but yeah, so and then when I was knitting it, I did try to pull colors that would have nice contrast yeah. so that I would get the, the Is that the stuff. point you want to have high contrast between, you know, when in your color work? Yeah, I mean, if, if you want the little, um, what Andrea calls blips to show, which they are, then little they've got to at least be like different colors. Yeah. So there are some, like you can see, like even here, where the blips. They're not. They're more it's lower not contrast. contrast. Yeah. That's, that's a really nice effect, though. Yeah. So, and of course, what weight is this? What weight would you knit this in? Um, I don't remember what the pattern calls for. It's been a couple of years now. So. If it's DK, I think the making tracks, right? Yeah. Would be amazing. Yeah, and then I had some gauge issues, which um, Ann Bud helped me out with. With, with her top down <laughs> book? With her top down book. Because Love that book. This is basically, you've got like a four stitch repeat with the blips. Uh -huh. So it was easy. Like I finished the yoke and the yoke fit perfectly, but my counts were off. Oh. Um, I don't. I don't remember exactly what I did. It was just... Who knows, right? Um, so I went to the Ann Bud book and I found the stitch count that was closest. And then I made sure that the body, I used Ann Bud's counts for the body. Excellent. So that it would that be the is same. Wonderful. And yeah, it, it was quite, it was honestly a, a lovely success. Yes, what a, so. what a good rescue as well, because I think, you know, lots of us would probably be like, oh my God, it's not the exact same and I don't know what to do and either rip it out or. or yeah, and since it. I liked the fit of the yoke and I knew if I could figure out how many stitches I needed for the sleeves and yeah. the body, yeah. then it would it could work out. Yeah. Um, but doing the math on my own was not great, so I just pulled. Oh, it's wonderful! Down. She's done it all for you. So that's Ann Bud's uh, handy book of top down sweaters. I think it's called Handy Book. But anyway, top down sweaters. Yeah. Uh, we have it here in the shop, and it's absolutely. Yeah. It's been fantastic. harder for us to stock lately, but yeah. we get it whenever we can. Yeah. Um, and she's got a number of different.
different top down yep. yokes in there either a raglan a circular um drop shoulder, drop shoulder and set in sleeves yeah and so i just went to the circular yoke yeah. and looked for the size that was close to the count i had yeah and, and fudged it from there fudged it from there fudging is your friend when yes. you're a knitter yeah i the re and i think partly the reason i was able to easily fudge it with this is because it was a four stitch repeat Whereas yes. with my quilty, because the pattern was yes. larger, I couldn't fudge it without messing up the pattern. Yes, yes, I mean, yes, yes. That was not yeah. good, but this was easy to fudge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love so, it. It looks so good. When you I'm walked so in this easy. morning, I was like, whoa! I know. Yes, <laughs> absolutely beautiful. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. Um, What are you wearing? Thank you. I was about to just launch into my to what I'm wearing and then I thought no I'll wait for you to ask yeah. um I'm wearing this is uh, my Pepsi sweater I call it and it is um called Pepsi because the yarn came from an alpaca called Pepsi oh okay so this is a actually my only alpaca knit and it's because I bought it from a friend I bought the the yarn from a friend who's local and had alpacas she had is it 100% alpaca? no so it's 60 alpaca 20 wool and 20 tinsel okay and so this is the freya sweater and i wrote down the um courtney kelly is the designer and looking at ravelry i knit this in 2014 wow and i used a uh, drops alpaca for the color work here okay um but i've Beautiful. always really liked this sweater because it does fit nicely and it's got a nice sort of drape to it because mm -hmm. of the alpaca yeah um, it's never felt like it's, you know, stretching too much or anything. Is it very warm? It's lovely and warm. So much so that um, I didn't have to turn the heat up quite as much as I thought I okay. would. So, yes, uh, this is a favorite sweater. I've, I wear this a lot. I really like the neckline on it. I'm wearing it next to skin because it's so soft. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, you know, really nice. I, I love bumping into Meg, whose alpacas they wear when I'm wearing it because... Uh, you know she she can see her her lovely alpaca she doesn't have them anymore so meg has a lot of shetland sheep though okay and um she's actually shelling wool week right now nice i know so i i hope they're having a wonderful time she's there with Amber, i was watching a bunch of the online um recaps yeah shetland wool week and yeah. now i really want to oh i know we have to make that happen maggie I know. i've always just the you know i've always thought well i can't go it's the beginning of school the kids you know but at some point, Mama's just got to go. <laughs> Do you want to go next year? We'll try and make it happen. <laughs> she said it on air. I know, right? Now I have to do it. We have to do it. That would be amazing. We have a very... It really would, wouldn't yeah. it? We have a very special treat for you in that Tina, who is... Um, Oh, she does all kinds of stuff for the Woolly Thistle, and she's yeah. been with us a long time. Um, she was not a knitter when she started at the Woolly Thistle, and she's now knitted her third sweater. Yes. And she's going to tell us about it. So let's go get her. Yeah. So welcome, Tina. Tina, you've worked at the Woolly Thistle for such a long time and have done all the different kinds of jobs yeah. with us. And you have just finished a sweater, which looks absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Yes. I'm so delighted with it. <laughs> <laughs> and myself <laughs> of course <laughs> of course so tell us what it is and all um, about it so this is the branches and bud buds yeah i carry bostic hogue yeah um it was designed for i think it calls for a sport weight yarn mm -hmm. but i used um strict garn which is dk weight it looks fantastic um and I didn't really, like, I tried a gauge swatch because I know that's what you're supposed to do. I'm a fairly, like, beginner knitter, and I try to follow the rules, but I really don't like to. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I used, I wanted to knit it in strict garn because we have it here at the Woolly Thistle. Yeah. It's affordable. It's yeah. trusty. Like, I feel like I've used vanilla garn and yeah. could do that. Yeah. So this is 105 in strict garn. And this is... Um, Making tracks. Making tracks. Junction Fiber Mill, um, the summer shade color. Gorgeous. Um, it's my first experience with a variegated yarn. Yeah. And I loved it. It was, oh. made the color work so exciting. <laughs> I actually thought you'd been very clever and managed your own. Uh, oh, no. But it, but it looks <laughs> phenomenal. None of that. <laughs> None of that. No. I just took what came. And there were parts where I was like, oh, I'm not loving how, like, there's more white in this part. But yeah. then, like, you just get what you, you get. And you it, get it what works. You get. Yeah, yeah, it really does. It looks yeah. amazing. Well, congratulations on this lovely FO. So you've blocked you can... it and everything? Yes, I have blocked it. It's it's quite roomy. Like So back to the gauge. I, yeah. I never really 
got gauge. So I just knitted the smallest size. Yeah. And since it's top down, I just kept fitting it on as I went. Did and you make any adjustments? Or did you yeah, stick? You I mean, did? I sort of like just did what, you know, like I would fit it on and the yarn was still a little big. It's still a little big, but, um, you know, a so few more went, decreases here yeah. and there. But since it's top down, I just kind of did what made sense as I went. Yeah. Although it looks and, like it has a nice roomy, like cozy fit. It's yes. Not like yeah. So there's definitely tight. a lot of room like here, but it's it's nice. I, I like it that way rather yeah. than being really. It's like a sweatshirt fit. fit. Yes. Yeah. 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 It looks so good. And the, the straight guy, I think, is a lovely fabric. Yes. Once you yeah. wrap it. Yeah. yeah. I think, I don't. I think I was on a five or a six oh. for this and yeah I really liked it good job any yeah. problems uh with the underarms closing holes or anything like that um no I did a little bit after afterwards just you just know with my the, ends yeah. just kind of yeah close them up yeah, close those great yeah. so would you recommend this as a beginner knitter Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I started with the vanilla sweater mm -hmm. and then I did one of Jennifer Steingass's patterns. Yeah. Um, so I've never tried anything that's not just top down. Yeah. Um, so I think it's absolutely doable for a beginner and even beginner color work because it's very predictable. Yeah. And it's, it's a short repeats. So there's no right. uh, catching floats right. or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well done you. Thank you for sharing it with us. Thanks for having me. It's beautiful. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for Tina joining us. I love seeing her sweater. She has come such a long way as She's a knitter. She's quite um, fearless she as well. She is. Yes. I would never have jumped into a sweater. I didn't. Um, yeah, because I, I think she knit a hat and then knit a sweater. She knit a few hats, Did I she? think. Like, I think she really made sure she had some of those fundamentals down. Yeah. And then she's just adventurous. Well, and, and honestly, and... knitting a sweater in the round is a big tube and knitting a hat is a smaller tube. I mean, it's... Yeah. Yeah. Or it's like a tube and then tubes off the tubes. Tubes off the tubes <laughs> and joining the tubes. But no, she's done a beautiful job. Yeah. 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 Really so, proud of our Tina. Um, and that was, she knit her branches and buds as part of our sweater cow. Today is the last day for it our is. sweater cow. It is. Um, it's hard to believe that. Yeah. Um, that, we we had a little weeks went pretty fast. It, oh God, time does. It just does. <laughs> it does. Um, we we had a quick uh, Zoom call over last mm -hmm. weekend with some of you that that joined us, and we had a lovely visit, and everybody got to show us their FOs as well, which was really really yeah. lovely. Um, if you had signed up for the sweater cow, but you missed the Zoom call, if you were busy or whatever, um. You check your email. You should have received a link to so that you could rewatch Zoom and <laughs> just see people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so good to see people's sweaters and um, to hear about their projects and their. Our, our community is full of amazing knitters. It so really it was is. Just nice to be and able to amazing see people. Share. Period. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And uh, so yeah, it's the end of the sweater cow and. Today's the last day, so you got to get your FO pictures in the threads or the group. Uh, by midnight tonight, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, we usually do by midnight. Um, there's usually a little squeaky time in there just because we have to shut down the thread and most of us are asleep by midnight. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, yes, if you're a little so late, that. if it's open, <laughs> throw it in. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but the, the Ravelry thread and then for anything, um, if you're in the Facebook group, you have, you, you have to use the Hashtag 2022 TWT Sweater Cow so that we can see that so that you're prize eligible. Yes, yes. And we'll be working on all of that um, over the next week or so. Yep. And so. we'll announce prizes and we'll be sure to email yes. um, everybody who signed up for the Sweater Cow so yes. that you can, it's just always fun to celebrate the winners. And my, my hope is that you have a sweater that is finished or nearly finished or well on its way and that you really enjoyed the experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, the chat thread in Ravelry and on Facebook will remain open. We, you can still yeah. talk about your sweater knitting if you're not done yet. Um, I am one of those. I and, have not finished. And we hope you do. Like if you're still, I mean, yeah. we're always sweater knitting. In our yeah, group, but, yeah. Uh -huh. So just keep on, keep on talking about it. It's not like... You got to stop talking about it now the cow is done for yeah. sure. So yeah, keep keep us abreast of your progress or challenges or questions, whatever there is. Um, that that would be great. Yeah. Um, so you managed to have an FO for I, the I sweater did. cow. So. I'm just wondering though, if before we do that, should we announce a winner? Yes. Maggie, yes, we there should. you go. We'll announce another winner later on too. So there's two chances to win. So the first winner is Dolores Jackson. And Dolores says, Thank you so much for a jam packed episode of Wooly Goodness. There are so many great yarns and things to see and touch. Mm -hmm. I intend to keep my eyes on the blankets. Cheers. <laughs> Those blankets. Now, 
that that tells me she watched right to the end last I time. Thank you for that. So yeah, we'll, we'll give you a peek of those coming up really soon. We will. But Dolores, if you can email us at info at the woolly thistle and put winner in all caps in the subject line, we will get your twenty five dollar gift certificate to the woolly thistle yes. to you. Yes. Um, if you are watching and you would like to be eligible for a prize, just leave a comment, subscribe, and leave a comment. Give and, us a thumbs up. Yep, and we will. You'll be eligible. That's yep. all you have to do is just yep. leave a comment. Yep. That's it. And we will announce another winner later in the show as well. So, Maggie, back to you and your FO because it's gorgeous. My FO. I'll scoot you back in here. My FO is my Rodari. Um, Which is lovely. The pattern. I think everybody's seen this pattern at this point. Um, There's so many projects. It's by Yadis yeah. Jan's daughter. Um, and it's knit in Let Lopi. And, has uh, matching sleeves now. Has matching sleeves now. I was able to easily... Um, I just kind of picked up the stitches first and then cut it off, cut it off and pulled it out and yeah. knit it. And Looks you really, good. it's interesting. You really can't tell at the all. Difference. No, not at so. all. No. And then, <clears throat> so this is knit in wet lopi mm -hmm. and I just love your color work. Thank you. It's gorgeous. It was a lot of fun. So this one, you knit the pattern bottom up. And then you join everything, and the color work is last. And I found out I was very excited to get to the color work. <laughs> <laughs> so you're decreasing as you yeah, so move you, up to the end. Yeah, and it was it was really good. And then you you know switched to smaller needles and did your neck band. Did the ribbing. Have you tried it on? I have. I've tried it on. It fits great. So good as soon you. as it's cool enough, I'll be wearing it. It wasn't yeah. quite cool enough this yeah. morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So absolutely lovely. I'm in love with this color blue it's just so soft and but it's got a lot of depth it's not like a baby blue it's a like gray blue yeah it's very heathery and, yeah um so this is color 1300 um and then i wrote down because somebody was asking and i always forget uh the darker blue is 9418 um and then the cream color and the rust color is 9427 mm -hmm. yeah so lovely 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 that's it now you yeah. have two White lopey sweaters, mm -hmm. right? Actually, three because I need a Felix too. Oh, of course. That feels completely different, though. It does. So it's not an Icelandic, right? Coach, but it is right. a white lopey. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So good for you. Yeah. And then I have my <clears throat> Plodo lopey marled sweater that I knit last year. Yes. So I'll be all lopey. Oh, you're this into winter. that. I do. Icelandic I, wool. I really like the. It's funny too because I tried spinning Icelandic wool and I couldn't stand it. Um, Why not? I probably, it was poor prep. I prepped it myself. Um, <laughs> and I, I don't know. It was kind of a, I, I bought the a little bit of fleece online and it was probably it's not very great. Nice. It was smelly. <laughs> and oh. it had a, you had the two, it was an experiment to just fit because it's the dual coated. Yeah. And you've got the tog and the fell and I forget which one's the, the one of them is the undercoating and then the. The rest is, is these hairy bits. Yeah. And there was a lot of hairy bits in there. Right. It was just weird. Yeah. Um, it would be a lot to manage it, as a hand spinner, I'm yeah. sure. So I, I should probably try. Maybe when we go to Rhinebeck, I'll look and see about getting some pre-prepped Icelandic. Go. That's a good see, idea. Because I have a feeling that it was somewhat me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I love wearing it so much. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I like Let Lopi too. Yeah. And Let Lopi and Plotalopi are in pretty good stock right now. Mm -hmm. Um it's been really hard over the summer months and beyond. Um I think supply was an issue, but they seem to be getting caught up again and we yeah. do have more in stock than we've had yeah. in a while. So that's good. All yes. right, well, well done. If we you. have a very cold Rhinebeck. Yes. Maybe I can wear it. Yeah. But We'll yeah, see. We'll it's see. not usually that cold. It's not usually so cold. Yeah. But people are aware of their beautiful stuff. Um, I, I rather ashamedly show you whoops, my <laughs> my entry for our sweater cal. Um, I finally took this off and fit it, tried it on, and she's uh, I'm so disgusted. She's too big. By a, by a mile. And I think, and it would be even more if it stopped curling. So I think that um, I did swatch. My swatch doesn't, I'm not paying any attention to my swatch because I think I'm just getting looser and looser as I knit up. Yeah, I've been enjoying knitting it, but I did start to get the feeling that this feels really big. And so I put it on cords and 
sure enough, it's big. So I think what I need to do is either rip it out and start over or stick it up the side, take out the excess, join it back in the round and keep going. And that's what I'm leaning towards. Now, I'm wondering, because it kind of tilts out. It does. But so <laughs> if it had, would it, if it didn't, would it still be too big? Yes. Well, no, if it's stuck, I, I would, I would live with it being an okay. inch or so there. And I think this is actually getting stretched out because I keep pulling at it. So no, what happened is because my gauge changed from here to here, um, it's increasing like this. Mm. So I'm not going to be able to stick it straight up because then I'd be pulling in too much of the bottom and I don't want to do that. Right. So what I think I'm going to do, and I, if I do this, which I will do this, I think, I'll try and record it. But I think what I'm going to do is a mattress stitch before I cut anything into the stitches that I want to have come together. So more at the top, less at the bottom and sort of pull it like a corset, you know, like a kitchener mm -hmm. so that it just all closes up and then I can cut it. And I'm not too worried about the side seams and patterns and all of that. It will be what it is. Um, they don't match now anyway. Um, this is actually written for being knitted flat. Um, and when you look at your start and your end, it's not that they match anyway. Right. So I, I feel pretty good about that. Um, I have been knitting it in the round and I have added a false seam by doing a purl stitch right. on either side. So that's my middle and I'm going to work from there and I'm going to, and you know, if, <laughs> if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. It's not the end of the world. I haven't knit the whole thing. Um, but I think I'd like to try and experiment and see if I can fix it in a way that will be wearable um, and more fitted to me. I'm just so annoyed at myself that I let this happen. You know, because yeah. I did swatch. I got the right gauge. But I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. I wonder if you could, like, figure out how much you would need to cut out and put it almost like put them on waste yarn and remove them yeah and then keep knitting a bit to make sure that oh. the size is good before you cut anything wow yes and then you would just need that's to a good sneak idea. out just the bottom maybe that's what i'll do and not the i hadn't thought of that that's a good idea so maybe what i'll do is do both sides with a lesser amount of fabric yes i think that's a good idea thank you i hadn't thought of that yeah and then just keep knitting it and then, you know, see if that's going to work. Good. I have a plan. We have a plan. We'll see how it goes. Um, I mean, if this side looks nice too, like I would almost just keep this side. That way it's only one side you're... you're I'm not... Punching. I don't want to do it on this side though. This is where I change the yarn. Oh, I see. Oh, I, yeah. I don't want to do it on you're... this side. Well, I was thinking I didn't want to cut these out because these need to be sewn in. These threads. But if you, you could always reinforce the steak, like, because if you're going to cut out enough fabric, you can reinforce those, maybe needle felt them or whatever. To but how, sure but how do you do that when you don't have the steak stitches? I'm using, um, I would be needle felting it onto live stitches. Right? Right. Although, if you're going to have to cut like this, maybe some of the bottom where you have those strands, you won't have to cut those. Uh -huh. And then... If you're gonna cut it out anyway, I would reinforce it. I would. I mean, if you're gonna cut, if you're gonna needle felt it, like if you have a piece like that, I would needle felt it. But and then if are you're you needle cut felting it, anyway, it back onto the fabric, though. No. Oh, you would just have it sticking out and needle felt that. Yeah. Wouldn't that stay stuck out though? But if you're you're gonna have to cut it anyway, so you just oh needle felt sure. it before I cut it. <clears throat> yeah. Ba, 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 ba. Cut it and then what? Open it up and sort of flatten it out. Yeah. Ish, sort of. Oh well, I this is actually this is actually exciting. I'm I'm on board for trying yeah. these things and see what I can do. Um, you know, I think before. I think before I would have you know, hated that I did this and I would have ripped it out. And I could still do that for sure. But I am actually excited by the prospect of experimenting with steaks and trying to trying to just fix it without having to re-knit it. Yeah. Um, 
and you know and if it fails then it's good information that don't do that again <laughs> but i'm just so annoyed at myself that i'm having to yeah. deal with it at all but isn't it pretty though it is really pretty yeah 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 so i was quite happily knitting away on it and then realized this feels big even for me so and i have my c what's it called seaweed sweater mm -hmm. the Your sleeveless seaweed slipover. i've got yeah seaweed slipover i've got that you know it measures just fine at the bottom and then i can see it just mm. ah. so that's me but these things happen i'm not gonna let it I think I'm going to use it as a as an exploration of what I can do to different ways I can fix it. Do you have it. anything else going that's more mindless? Let's see. To comfort you. Yes, I have. I'm actually there's a sweater that I'm knitting on right now that's my own mm -hmm. recipe that I'm putting together, and I've reached the sleeves. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, so that would that was fun to pick that up and just be like, oh yeah, I can knit a sleeve, blah, 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 and not worry about it. And it's iron white too, okay. so it's nice and quick. I'll show yeah. that sometime. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. C'est la vie. Life goes on. Let's learn from this and I'll share what I learn, whether it's good or bad. I'll share it here. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, all right. Do you have any other whips? I have some whips. Um, so, <clears throat> I, this weekend, I, I have a limited, isn't it cute? Can I show this? Version? I just saw it. <laughs> it's so cute. Um, so, before I show my knitting, um, so I got, I have a thing for otters <laughs> oh. and um, there's an Etsy website. It's actually Virginia Sattler Reimer. She's a designer and her husband has. This is hers? An, no, her husband has an Etsy shop oh. um, where he, it's called Scratchcraft and he makes little needle felted animals. Oh my and gosh. I couldn't resist the otter. He had this amazing yeah. little otter and oh. my youngest daughter and I were just obsessed. With well, you otters. are you are an otter, <laughs> fun loving, and um, yeah. So I couldn't oh, resist. It has a cute little shell, and yes. it's just adorable. It's Very. beautifully made, and it really, it's kind of a wee. He is. He's so oh, cute. And the little whiskers. <laughs> he's getting lots of love at our house. We're oh, keeping him away from the cats too. <laughs> little feeties. I know. My uh, Instagram feed is full of otters holding hands and mamas and babies and yeah. all that stuff. I know. So cute. Yeah. So. Um, his Etsy shop yeah, is we'll Scratch Craft. Um, he's got lots of cute little like owls who are holding knitting. Oh my gosh! They're they're just really amazing. Oh my so, gosh! Yeah, I'll be checking that um, right out. Yeah, so gorgeous. If he makes more otters, I'll, I'll be <laughs> buying. <again. laughs> we'll have like a whole. That's awesome. Maybe otters. he's using up Jenny's uh, leftover scraps to make these. I don't, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I think he's got his own thing going, which yeah, is pretty amazing. That and, is. Um, they're they're all just so good. Wonderful. So that's that little. Yeah. Um, little wooly bit yeah so this weekend I went through the closet and I had mentioned this before so I had knit this sweater Ooh. a few years ago um Ooh. it's the art walk cardi haven't heard of it um it's from Hannah Fettig it was remember when we had the book textured, textured I was gonna say yeah it's still so, a texture um but oh, I like when it. I knit it it's the the um the shawl collar I hadn't picked up enough stitches. So that is a big problem with yeah. these types. Of... And it was really like, it's hard because it's on the needles now. So it was kind of scrunching up like this when I was wearing it. Yeah. And it did it feel uncomfortable? Yeah. Neck? And, the, and the neck, it was barely rolled on the neck. Instead of having a nice yeah. um, amount of fabric there, it was almost not rolled. Yeah. So I was always fiddling with it and yeah. I ended up not wearing it. Right. Um, and, and you just needed more stitches. I just needed more stitches. I've had that happen too and it um, makes all the difference. And I didn't know that when I first knitted. It was sort of, I had this moment where I was like, oh, that's what I did. Yeah. Um. So It's very pretty. It is. I think the yarn is like an... Um, I think it's an old quince yarn. Is I it? bought it. Um, we were on vacation in Portland, Maine. Uh huh. And I stopped oh, you went to, to what's it called? Knit, knit, wit, knit, 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 knit. I wanted to say Something knit, like that. Somebody yeah. It. So nice little um, shop. It's been so. I, so I pulled it out as I was getting all my sweaters and everything out. At least sweaters I can wear now. Yeah. Um, and switching sort of my closet over. It feels very like, heavy. You know, it is. It's a. It is funny. Um, Caitlin talks a little yes. bit about that too in her segment. Yes. So, 
Um, I'll, I'll let her. But the difference between a woolen spun and a worsted spun, you have so many more fibers in a worsted spun yarn mm -hmm. that they are. They're just It's heavier. just a heavier thing. Um, yeah, maybe we should go to Kaylin now then, seeing that, that came up, because yeah. I'm definitely feeling that and yeah. uh, holding this. So, so we'll, we'll go to Caitlin in a minute. But... <laughs> Um, so I tried. So, so what I did this weekend was I just I snipped the end and just ripped it out, and I still yeah. had some leftover yarn. Yeah. Um. So I'm washing <laughs> what I had ripped out yeah. because I think I might need it. Yeah. But, um, so how many more rows do you think you've got? I did don't you, know. I didn't. Is it, I is it going counted. to fold back or is so it, it going does to lie fold flat? back? So okay. I still need to knit like a good another oh, okay. three or four inches. It's going to be lovely though. Um, I like the the length of it too. It's a little bit cropped. It is a little bit cropped. I'm I don't You're I'm kind of short torso, yeah. so um it'll fit right around just to my hips. Gorgeous. And, Gorgeous. Um, I like the color I, too. I know. I really like this color. Yeah. That winey red. Yeah. Um beautiful. So, I'll have to depill it because it's so this is sort of how long has this been on the well when did you so I just did that this weekend yeah I but when did you originally it. finish it I mean this is, is this a historical knit it is a sort of a historic knit mm -hmm. um it hasn't worn that well I think partly because the yarn is pretty nice but after a while I stopped wearing it because that shawl the collar was yeah. uncomfortable so yeah. um but it's too nice to just sit in the closet of course so. yes Reuse. And then I'll give it a good blocking and depilling. Yeah. And I can see it like I have a little hole under the arm. So I'll I'll fix that. Yep. Um I'm at yeah. I'm at the point where I have so many knits of the historical variety that I need a mending pile because I start to go through elbows or yeah. um I've got stitches coming away. Yeah. Um the idea of mending though does not light me up, unfortunately. Huh. It's sort of a chore. But I, th but I think it would help if I just had it all together and then just kind of got through one a week or something and tidied yeah. them up. So I tend to do that beginning of season, end of season, like as I'm pulling everything out. Yeah. Does everything look okay? Yeah. Um, And everything got a wash before it went in storage. Yeah. So just checking to make sure that it looks okay coming yeah. out. And thankfully it all did. Yeah. Um, and then I said, you know, instead of waiting, I'm just going to get it yeah. done. Because yeah. this is the time of year where I could just throw it on. Exactly. And um, it's not a huge <clears throat> amount of work. It's not. It's one of those two, like, I think I just kept putting it off because I'm like, oh, I'll get to it. I'll get yeah, to it. that's me. Uh -huh. um, and it's easy to kind of kick it down the road. So yeah. No, good for you. I That'll jumped feel... in and like, I'm getting that done. <clears throat> that will feel really good. May we go to Caitlin? We can go to Caitlin now. <laughs> and then you can hear more about Caitlin sweaters that she did for the sweater cow yes. and she's going to talk a little bit about um yarn yes yeah differences well. that yes it's very good so we'll yeah. see you on the other side hi everyone caitlin here nice to be back with you again i have a few different finished objects to show you today and just a little bit of wool yarn chat so um let's jump right in first i have my finished Manu sweater, which I made for the knit along. That's what this is here. I also finally finished my HAP from our HAP knit along earlier this year. And I have one other finished sweater uh, to show you today. So first let's talk about this Manu sweater. This is a design by Isabel Kramer in Retrosaria Brusca. Her original pattern calls for two different colors of Brusca. My main color is Brusca, color 14C, and for the contrast color instead of Brusca, I chose to use the new Making Tracks yarn from Junction Fiber Mill that we have in the shop. It is a sort of a hand-spun mimicking yarn. Um, does its own kind of color changing right in the skein. So I talked about this last time. I had the, the yarns to show you. Um, and so I have the, the finished product to talk a little bit about today. It's a top-down sweater. So you start up here. It has a few short rows in the back. You do some kind of back and forth there. That helps raise the neck, um, bring it forward. And then you do all this color work. Then it has a few more short rows at the bottom um, of the yoke. And then you go on to do the body and finish with uh, more color work at the bottom. So this again is um, kind of picking up the color change again. Um, I made the second size and was pretty close with gauge. Um, I think I was a bit 
tighter on the color work at the top than I thought. So then what I did is I was, I stuck with the same needle for the body. Um, and then what I did, knowing that I was tighter and gauged for the color work, I went up a needle size for the color work at the bottom. I did not want it to um, pull in if the t color work got tight at the bottom again. So I um, went up a needle size for that color work and I think that was a good call. And then for the hem, I went down two needle sizes from there, which is what the pattern calls for. I think maybe I would go down maybe one more needle size if I did it again, or maybe if I go back and fix the ribbing at the bottom, it flares out just a tiny bit. Um, not noticeably, but that's something maybe I would, I would fix um, going back. Um, really happy with how it fits and feels. The yarns were so fun to work with. I love the Bresca, how it just kind of fuzzes in and makes such a nice fabric. It just feels soft and fluffy, but also like, just like a cohesive fabric. It's not like you've got these individual stitches that are kind of separating. It, it just feels nice. Sturdy, but not stiff, I guess. Um, and the making tracks was just so fun. I, I just love <laughs> a color work yoke uh, to work on. It's just the most interesting, exciting, perfect amount of um, interest, but not challenging. Uh, it's the kind of thing you can pick up and put down. Uh, and then the changing of the color in it just makes it so much more fun. Um, were I to knit this sweater exactly again, I would change just a couple things. I talked about the ribbing at the hem. I would also maybe eliminate the short rows at the bottom of the yoke. I feel like the sweater has more bulk in the back than I would prefer. It's hard to tell from up close, but um, I don't think I needed any extra fabric there. And the short rows kind of add a little bit to the sort of ballooning <laughs> feel. Um, but yeah, otherwise super happy with that. Uh, as a, as a sweater knit along project, I got this one done in about a month, which is pretty good. Just kind of knitting in the, in the little moments here and there. So, uh, as far as the sweater knit along goes, today is our last day. So, um, as you're seeing this video, I'm recording early, but, um, hope that if you joined us you are super happy with your project and how the knit along went or that you're continuing on if you haven't finished yet um yeah and hope you enjoy wearing those sweaters um next i want to show my finished hap this was from our hap knit along back in the spring i knit the hansel hap uh, from gudrun johnston the half size there's the triangle half or there's a full square uh, version and I and then in each of those patterns there's three sizes I knit the medium one of the half wrap uh, so I've showed it on here before but just wanted to show you how it finally turned out um, so this is in Jameson and Smith yarns the main color is Shetland Supreme which is their undyed um, two ply jumper weight um, similar to the the color two ply jumper weight in um, in weight, uh, but it's undyed uh, two zero zero six I believe, and then a variety of colors in JNS two ply. Um, so yeah, I love how it turned out. I'll try to give you an idea of the size. It blacked out really nicely. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell <laughs> from from this just kind of how it how it fits, but I'm glad that I did the lace at the border, even though that was not my favorite part. It's um, just a little more um, more stitch directions than I can typically handle in any given sitting. I had to look every couple of stitches. It was not something I could memorize very easily. Uh, it wasn't very intuitive for me, uh, and I'm just not very comfortable in lace, so I really didn't want to mess it up because I didn't know how to fix it if I made a mistake. Um, yeah, love how that turned out. I blocked it out on my lawn using blocking wires. I stuck those in all the points 
um, kind of threaded it through all the points um, and then the long side and then I made um, sort of a impromptu blocking area on the lawn. I found some sticks that I stuck in the ground to kind of hold the wires uh, under a bit of tension and um, yeah so that's the finished hap there. That project's done. Now it's a nice little um, like lap blanket in the fall. Uh, and then one other project I haven't talked about on here yet. This is something that is not knit with the woolly thistle yarn. It was kind of a last minute cast on back in late winter. Uh, I had like a two month old at home and needed something in my hands, but wasn't really in a place where I could do like a special yarn project. I wanted something super low stakes. Uh, it was in a book I already had. This is from Amy Herzog's Ultimate Sweater book. And this is just a raglan uh, cardigan. I can maybe put it on over this sweater. Um, and it's just in some stash yarn. Um, it was gifted to my mom from a friend. So I don't even know the source of it really. Um, and yeah, it's just a, a raglan, um, sort of a v-neck. Um, it's missing buttons. Those will come eventually. Um, yeah, it's just, I did a little variation on a twisted rib at the bottom and it's just going to be like a cozy house sweater. But why I'm showing it here on the podcast is because I think it's really interesting to think about the difference between this um, cardigan sweater and the sweater that I'm wearing as far as the yarn choice. Uh, so this uh, yarn in the cardigan is from a brand I didn't recognize and it's not labeled as super wash but it's washable wool. I think this was maybe a yarn that's old enough that before they'd really coined the term super wash um, they just called it washable wool. It's a worsted weight. I didn't check the gauge of this against the gauge of this sweater but what I think is so interesting is just the experience of the yarn and the wearing of the sweaters uh, because of the the type of yarn. I said this is what we'd call today super wash. It is worsted spun. It is dense. Also I think it's knit at a fairly loose gauge for the weight of yarn that it is. Um, and I, I wish you could tell from a video just how like, drapey and heavy it is. It's just it stretches a lot. It's a very, just such a different feel from the woolly wools that I've gotten used to working with since I started working for the Woolly Thistle. Uh, it was just so interesting to go back to something like a superwash and remember what that feels like. Um, that's not to say that I don't like how this turned out. Um, I love both. <laughs> um, I, given the choice between one or the other. I do prefer kind of what I said about this sweater, how it feels sturdy but not stiff. Uh, feels like it's just going to wear out, um, wear in really well. It's going to be hardy. It's going to hold its shape. Uh, with this sweater, I have a feeling that after a couple of wears, the sleeves are going to be pretty loose in the elbows. Um, not sure pilling wise how it will do, but um, what I, what I did today in thinking about these yarns is I actually weighed both of the sweaters. Um, you would think that a, they would be kind of a similar weight. Um, like I used my kitchen scale and found that this sweater is 460 grams, whereas this one is only 370. So this one's almost 100 grams more than this one is and I think that comes down to the yarn. This being worsted spun, all the fibers are more in line with each other and kind of condensed down as they're spun. Whereas this one, um, the, the brusca at least, is woolen spun so it has a lot more air um, trapped in between the fibers which are kind of going every which way. Um, so it just kind of produces a lighter garment. And um, just thought I'd, I'd bring that up as 
something interesting to consider when you're thinking about choosing a yarn for a project. Maybe you want something that's going to be kind of heavy, stretch a lot, uh, have a lot of drape, um, something for like shawls um, can be nice or like a, a boxy fit sweater that you just you kind of want to have some flow to it. Um, knitting it with a worsted spun with a super wash yarn um, it's it's going to have a lot of that uh, sort of feel to it. But if you want something that's going to have a bit more structure maybe hold its shape a little bit better maybe hold up a bit more between washings um, and just maybe be easier to care for in general because when it's wet and you're trying to kind of reshape it, it's going to be easier. Uh, it'll hold its shape more. Um, then you might think about something like wool and spun. And now at, at the Woolly Thistle, we kind of have specialized in those woolly yarns. Um, not just wool and spun, but worsted and wool and spun. Some with really lovely drape and will make awesome shawls and drapey flowy things, um, but um, super wash is not something that you typically find in our shop. Uh, it can be really lovely for, especially um, hand dyers love to use super wash a lot of times. Not always, um, but I think it takes color really nicely and is easier to work with in the heat of the dyeing process because it won't felt so readily. Um, yeah, at the Valley Thistle, you mostly find the the hardy, shape-holding, um, kind of toothy, um, sturdy, but not necessarily stiff yarns. Uh, if you ever have questions about the quality of the yarns in our shop, whether they're good for certain types of projects, um, just feel free to reach out. We're always happy to ask, um, to answer any of your questions by email. Um, yeah, and happy planning for your next project. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Bye. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our time with Caitlin. I think her sweater is gorgeous. She's mm -hmm. making me want to knit with Bruska. Yeah. It looks really good. And uh, with the making tracks in there like uh, like Tina did. Yeah. Which is which is great. It's a great way to use that yarn. I forgot to ask Tina how much she used. Um, I think Caitlin said, did she, did I she think break she into just her used second? One I thought no, she she ended up oh being that's a right being, short on right the so uh, yes both of them will have only used one skein yeah. of that to do that so that's exciting and fun. Mm -hmm. I'm really into this whole shifty business. I think that might be a cast on for me soon. Yeah. I don't know why. It's very potato chippy, mm -hmm. and if you don't want a big project, um, Andrea Mowry has like the there's like a little cowl. Yeah. Um, I think I just want to play with with that change. You know the barber pulling and everything. It's a treat. It's a it treat. Is. And it's it DK, is. so it'll go fast. Yeah. 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 So okay. Um, do you have another whip for us? I have. I have one other whip. So I'm, I'm doing Stephen West's um, MCAL, and Ooh. as of time of recording, it's not yet started. So instead of um giving into my major cast on itis. <laughs> um, I went stashed uh, like whip diving basically. And so I pulled oh, out my um, my tapestry looks, cowl. So I made some progress. Good. It looks so good. So it's getting lots of attention now. That's good. Um, Are you enjoying it? What I am think? enjoying it. Um, and I'm knitting it on shorties now. So, so it's, it's just, just round and yeah, round. No round magic looping. That's good. Um, it's yeah, gonna... I'm using Jameson and Smith. I've got color 81 and FC... Uh, 50 or 51? I think 50... 51. 51, of course. Um, Very nice, is though. Purple. It's beautiful. It looks so good. It is. It's it so looks nice. so good. Here's my prototype one up here. Yeah. Um, but that yours is just the two colors, and what this one's the seven color one yeah. up here. Yeah. yeah. I think especially it's... It'll be so cozy. It's going to be lovely. I, I love my double wrap cowls for winter time. I just wear them all the time. I think yeah. keeping this part warm helps keep the rest of me warm. It does. That's why I like wearing a lot of shawls. So yeah. I think that this will just be really nice. Yeah. You could wear that with a shawl as well. I mean, just why not? Wool, why not? Wool. Oh my gosh. Yes. So. That would be good. Well, that looks lovely. Thank you. So that will probably get put aside again once the MCAL starts. Probably. So um, so you're doing this. Have you ever knit so, Stephen West before? I have never knit his MCAL before. No, I haven't. Um, and I don't know why. Like, I'm 
I just couldn't resist this one. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Was, um, was the parameters for this one? So this one is called the twists and turns one. So I'm sure that there'll be some cabling in there. Yeah. Um, and Twisted stitches. Twi probably some twisted. I don't know. Yeah. Like he, it's, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. What are you going to knit with? So I'm using Rambler. Oh. Um, I don't have my skeins, but we do have skeins here. I have picked... These are my colors. Oh, lovely. So I'm using, you need five 100 gram skeins for this. This is for so, show 500 grams of yarn. Yes. Yeah, so oh my you gosh. need two of um, one color and then two of another contrast. And then he says, then you need another 100 gram skein for what Stephen calls it color opportunity. <laughs> Can't say that enough. That's so fun. So I've picked these two colors and then I'm actually using stash hand yeah. spot hand spun for yeah. the opportunity. color opportunities so um so i didn't bring that skein with me but it's got a lot of like pinks and i wonder if any of our um viewers will be knitting along in that too i've seen a couple people comment that they're doing it yeah. too so i thought that rambler was a nice choice for it because i wanted something woolly yeah and since it is a three ply yeah so that'll pop. be nice and round it will be textured yes yeah, oh so. good oh i'm excited to see yeah so we'll see how what it goes un what so unfolds i yeah. think the first First clue comes out this week, so hopefully I'll have a little progress for you. I've got a lot of winding to do at my house now. Do you use and a ball winder and a swift? Yes. I still don't. Um, especially if I have five skeins to wind. True that. But you're going to do them all ahead of time. Well, you might need them all. Ahead. Yeah, I'm probably just going to do them all ahead of time. That way, I have them ready. I'm. A, I'm. A, I use my knees. I put my feet up and I use my knees. I do that sometimes. Yeah. Um, if I'm just doing like one skein, I don't mind yeah. doing that. But for five skeins, I'll probably just get the get it done. Out and get yeah. It done. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. That way, it's just in the project bag, ready to go. When, yeah. When I think I'm. Like, I. You know. But I could see me just doing it as I. You know. Change color. Okay. And then I unwind and off I go making a ball. Yeah. It's I, funny how we're different. This way I just want to jump into the knitting. Yeah, exactly. I'm ready to just knit. Yeah. Me, I put so. obstacles in my way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need that. I mean, those come along on their own. I know. I know. So, oh, my gosh. While we're chatting. Well, that's good. Um, I, I'm sorry to cut you off. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> don't mind me. While we're chatting about Rambler, um, I want to show Emma's socks. Yes. Um, so, in Emma Barnaby. Life. I'm very chatty today. You are. <laughs> just go for it. Emma Barnaby um, designed the Emma Woodhouse socks, and she showed these, um, I think, on our last segment, but then she shipped them to us, and it's been so great to see them. <gasps> she designed these for Rambler, yeah. and they look so good. I'm going to take this off here and show you. It's got a lovely... What I love about these is it's just a stockinette back, mm -hmm. so the pattern goes up the front of yeah. the sock, and it's really nice and quick really pretty really pretty she knit these in the natural she did these when we only had the natural and we mm -hmm. hadn't dyed any yet but it yeah. looks so good so pretty yeah and then i just saw on instagram i think it's jillian stitches is knitting a really pretty cabled sock pattern i'll see if we can find it and put it here for you in rambler in rambler and it's stunning oh just i can't wait really to see that gorgeous socks so good um yeah just gorgeous yeah we have sold out of a few colors now um yeah. two or three of them are no more like this one actually uh the natural sold out first but we still have a fair bit of some of the colors so go check it out if you're interested yeah. we won't have rambler in again for a while because we have to make it yeah. this is the woolly thistles on yarn which is a first for us and it's very very exciting um and then one of our um one of our packers, one of our employees, Ruth. she knit, Ruth knit these um, color work socks. This is the Reflected Lines pattern, and she used uh, lichen and aster. Yeah, very pretty. And the Reflected Lines pattern is by Radhika Losif. Um, and yeah, it's just really pretty. Yeah, yeah, so the color work is nice. Nice pops of color. Mm -hmm. This feels um, softer. I think this is knit at a looser gauge than um, yeah. than Emma Woodhouse, but still feeling nice and soft. Mm -hmm. These have been blocked. Very good. Nice and woolly. Thank you for that, Ruth. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, um, have you knit the other red sock? I haven't yet. That's one of the whips <laughs> that I was. Whip diving, but I haven't knit it yet. I really, I need to because I want to wear them. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah this is the one more step pattern by denise yeah lovely um yeah and i i need so to record good. agatha i said this last time i mm -hmm. guess that means two weeks has gone by and i haven't done it yeah. i need to get on that i was i did wear my i knit the one more step pattern in my exmoor yes um and i wore those last week for the first time. Was they it? were so nice. Really? They were so nice. That's I, so good. I think too the the cute little I'm not used to using like the little Shorties. shorty socks. Yeah. And I really like them. I felt so stylish in my shorty socks and my boots and <laughs> Knitters with I style. I was so pleased with myself. Talking to knitters <laughs> with style. Sorry, changing yeah. topic here. But um during our um Zoom call mm -hmm. when one lady girl called Leah, I think, mm -hmm. forget her last name. Ball, Leah Ball. Leah Ball. She had she had knitted her Karis mm -hmm. vest, and obviously a very good knitter because she'd done shaping and all of yeah. that kind of stuff. But she was wearing the cutest little plaid skirt with it and a little top underneath, and she looked adorable. And I thought she just did a really great job with the styling. It was the whole she? ensemble. It was, it, was, a, it was gorgeous. It was. It's uh, aspirational. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well done, Leah. It was nice to see that. And it was great to see everybody and everybody's uh, finished objects for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. One. So we're now at that section of our podcast where we talk about what's in the shop, which is always fun. Before we do, though, we wanted to just, you know, send out our love and well wishes to those of you in Florida who might have been in the path of Ian. Ian or South Carolina. I see that they got hit pretty hard, too. Right. Um, just know that we're thinking of you and we hope that you're well and that you're most of all that you're safe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Yep. Just we're keeping you in our thoughts. Mm -hmm. All right. So in the shop today... Um, they're not in the shop today, but they're um, coming. But they're coming. We 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 don't have a firm date on it yet. I'm our our inventory manager took a vacation. God, I know that, uh, that's um, all and, of us feel it, and we hope he had a wonderful time. <laughs> yes, um, and I did a good job of not pestering him. I did too. to ask him. Hey, have you heard from? Hey, have you heard <laughs> from? Um, so we these will go in the shop as soon as they arrive yes um and as soon as i know that they're coming we'll we'll put it in our email yes um, to give you a better timeline but we wanted to show them again we showed them near the end of, of last episode but they're too good to they're not too show good again. and they are gorgeous they are so gorgeous. let's have a wee look so we have three samples but we're going to have about 11 10 or 11 mm -hmm. different yeah. uh designs and you can go to the shop now the product page is live so you can go and you can look and see what are the designs that right. are coming Right, so um, these these are pure wool, hand woven, mm -hmm. Donegal Irish uh, blankets. Yeah, and they're quite large. They are quite large. This is this one's um, half, you know, like yeah. But here's the uh, here's the label here. Hold on, I can do this. There we go. Studio Donegal. Spinners and hand weavers, pure new wool, and it says dry clean only, which I think is fair. You wouldn't want to have to try and deal with this, right? Um, yourself. So, yeah. So really nice and big. Definitely nice on on your couch or over your bed. I actually threw one over my bed, and we've mm -hmm. got photos of that. Um, so we have a couple of different uh, designs here. This one is definitely ticking boxes for me. Um, yep. <laughs> Look at this one. Oh, it's so pretty. It and is. they all have these lovely tassels. Fringe. Fringe? Yeah, fringe. Bangs. They're so good. Yeah. Really, really nice. And it's nice and soft, isn't it? It really is. It's nice and cozy. It is not prickly at all. I think, too, the more that you cuddle up with this. Yeah, the it's better it's going to get. Better. Yeah. Um, but it's right out the box. It was pretty, pretty dark. Pretty soft, good. yeah. And a nice, nice weave on it. So yeah. that's this one. Yeah. And then I really like this one. This is lovely too. They're all, we, they're, they're all, they're all really good. Look at that. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous. I could see me taking one of these to the football games as well. Oh, the practices yeah. and stuff and just wrapping up. Yeah. Well, the I always stylish. thought those moms were so smart. The ones who kept a blanket like in, in the, the car. car. Yeah. Where I'm like, why would you have a blanket in the car? And then I'm out of the game freezing. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm jealous of that mom. Exactly. Exactly. Same here. These were custom made for us by Donegal, by Studio Donegal. In Ireland. In Ireland. And they're just amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
we're very happy to have these aren't we yeah so as soon as they come in they will go live in the shop we'll let news sub newsletter subscribers know we yeah. could also put a note in our facebook group if you're there um mm -hmm. so that you know that they're here too yeah right absolutely yes yeah. We, yeah we'll we'll drop a note in all the places all the places yes um, for sure. Because we do have quite a few, but you know, I wouldn't wait all day either. Maybe if you're interested in something like this, go decide what you would like so that you can order it as yeah. soon as they go live. Um, we have, like I say, we have quite a few. Yeah. And since they are live in the shop, you can sign up for the back, back in stock. stock notification. So if there's a specific color or colors that you really want, Click. you can sign up that way literally the minute they hit. You'll get um, an email. Get so an what email. you do is easy enough. You just go to the shop. You go to the product page. You select the, the design you like. You click on the notify me later button. Mm -hmm. And you put your email in. And then we will email you when that populates yep. with stock. So there's many ways to find out. Just have your eyes and ears up if you're interested. Mm -hmm. um, these are beautiful. Very, yeah. very happy with these. Maggie, what else do we have in the shop right now? We have Blacker Birthday yarn. We do have Blacker Birthday yarn. We have the, especially, we have a bunch of the four ply. <sighs> um, so pretty. So you still have an opportunity to get the four ply. The yeah, DK the, went uh, like hotcakes. Yes, it sold out very quickly. And I wonder if people didn't realize that we also had the four ply. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, it's beautiful. But this, yeah. This one talks to me a lot. This color here is cliff pinks which I think are sort of like sea pinks you know but it's that very grayed out pale pink yeah and these are named Gorgeous. for um so this is folklore is yeah the, the name of the line and they're named for Cornish uh folk tales. folk tales yeah um so this one is bolster's blood which is lovely mm -hmm. and this one sort of a rusty pinky yeah and this is, you called it Marlowe, and I think that's a perfect color. Mm -hmm. This is Lady's Lantern. And the four ply you get, um, let me just see, is 380 yards per 100 gram. So it's actually um, quite a, uh, it's not a thin four ply, but it is a four ply. But it's, uh, it's, a, it's a gorgeous weight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the natural is called Lover's Cove. Yeah. And it's, it's really woolen spun too. So it's going to have that sponginess. It's very yeah. soft. So it's Merino, English Merino. Shetland. Shetland. And North Ronaldsea, which is the, oh, for me. I love <laughs> North Ronaldsea. seaweed eating sheep. Yep. Yep. With the weather going all around them. This is the Fairy Miners. And of I course, like color. yeah, this is sort of a peachy but dark peach. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, Midsummer's Night, which mm. is a nice blue. Yeah. Just want to show you these three together. It's rather pretty. They all go really well together. Mm -hmm. Logan Rock. Very pretty. And Pisky's Garden, which is a lovely green. Yeah. Yeah, with that dark If my too. youngest wore wool, <laughs> this would be her green. Awesome. Pretty, pretty. Mm -hmm. Very lovely. So we do have stock of this left right now. Yep. It, I doubt it'll last very it long. It is a limited edition, so it's only here while it's here. Yep. Oh, it's gorgeous. And, lovely. And lovely. we won't be restocking it. So right. if, you, if it's something you want, now's the time. Now is the time. One. So Maggie, what else do we have in the shop special this weekend? Special this weekend, we have put together more Rama six packs. We, Which did, is, this, yes. we did this a little while ago and it was really um, popular. Really popular and just a fun little mix. Um, we're, we're, I think we're often known for our Jameson and Smith grab bags that yep. we do um, a couple times a year. And yep. those are a lot of fun. And yep. so we thought, let's play with the Rama, Rama fennel garn. Yeah. Um, so we we have, we, we, we try to um, curate the collections of colors so that, you know, buying one of these. So these are not grab bags. These are, this is what you get. Yeah. So yeah. We, we've named them. We've given them some fun names yeah. in the shop. So. We, we have four new, so what we'll show you now are the four new um, combinations that we put together. We also restocked some of the ones that were really popular from last time. So check it out. if you missed one last time, you can um, head to the shop and check it out. So here um, we have four new colorways. This one is sweater weather. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't Love resist. It. That's sort of a wine color in there. It's hard to tell with the 
And of course, yeah. if we haven't mentioned, this is all fennel garn. So mm -hmm. it's the fingering slash sport weight uh, fennel that we love here. Oh, this one. I know. Look at this. This is pumpkin spice, and you can see why. Just beautiful colors. You know, this is really good for knitting a color work yoke mm -hmm. or for knitting actual baby pumpkins. There's patterns out there for oh, stuff yeah. like that or little garlands. Fall foliage. Yes. 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 And then we couldn't resist putting together one because it's that time of year. This one's called poinsettia. And um, it's, it's all kinds of Christmas seed colors. Yeah, yeah. So nice especially little deal. every year I tend to knit some Arnie and Carlo's Christmas balls. Yeah, yeah, very good for that. So um, we should say too that, you know, you get uh, six balls for the price of five in these packs. So yeah. it's a little deal for you. Yeah. And uh, we get them while they're here. Yeah, and they're fun, especially if you're going to knit color work. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Lovely, lovely. Okay, so we've got those in so the shop. So these are in the shop only for this three-day weekend. That's right. So, yes, yeah, so only for this uh, for this weekend through the end Friday of Monday. Friday through Monday, yep. Yeah, and um, you get a, little, get a little money off, too, which is mm -hmm. nice. Mikey, what's in that box? Should we look at that? In that box, yeah, we're going to look at that. All right. I love a box. Mm -hmm. This is a fun box. It is. Show us. I don't remember if we showed this last time. I don't I don't remember either. Well, let's show them. So. Lichen and lace. Now, this is already in the shop. You can get this This is in today. the shop now. Yes. yes. This is pretty. our latest book bundle. Yeah. Look at these colors. Gorgeous. So, lichen and lace. Sport weight yarn. Uh, hand dyed by lichen and lace mm -hmm. up there in Canada. Yep. So, Go we've ahead. got four different colorways that you can choose from um, in the shop. And you get the four colorways. You get our woolly thistle tote, mm -hmm. which is slightly gusted. Mm -hmm. um, and then you get these fun books. Um, they are <laughs> they are the Paranormal Cozy Mystery Series. They're vampire knitting books. The Vampire Knitting Club. We have a couple of staff members in here who absolutely love these. Yeah. Um, Tina started reading them and she's like, I don't usually read this type of book, but she's like, I can't stop reading it. <laughs> um, <laughs> so they're just fun, light, cozy, yeah. nothing gory. Nothing so gory, got the just silly first fun. four books in the series. Yep. Um, I think that there are more, way more than four. I'm like hitting myself with the box, but um, they're just, they just seem really fun. Fast reads and um, fun. So. And pretty. All four. So and a really fun stitch marker set with this one. But oh, if you yes. want to show the colorways, then okay. I'll show that. So I showed you the first colorway. So this is one colorway selection, which is really lovely. Very yeah. I think that that's colorway option number four. Okay. And then, whoops, this is very pretty. Mm -hmm. This one's number two. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. They're all good. Yes, they are. Um, and lichen and lace, the, the rustic sport weight that we carry, is um, a single ply. Yeah. Very pretty. And also, this is what this people... This one was colorway number one. Thank you. And somebody pointed out, it may have been Caitlin, that really, if you buy this box set, you could use these four colors for a Lunenberg. So right. you just need to pick your main color. Yes. And these, you get all, yes. yeah, you'd be all set to knit a Lunenberg. Yes. So um, so here, let's And then the original that I held up is this. So very lovely. But these stitch markers, they kill me. I love these stitch markers so much. Here, I'm going to show a few. Okay. <laughs> um, so they're Halloween themed stitch markers. We've got a cute little black, black hat. And then we've got a little pumpkin head. Cute owl. Yeah. This is a little skull, like a sugar skull though. Mm -hmm. A little rat. Awesome. Oh, and sorry. this one is so funny. I love the zombie so it's much. It's a zombie. Or, yeah, <laughs> very cool. So you so get all of those. All of that. And these have been selling like hotcakes. They, they've been doing really well in the shop. We The last book bundle did so well that we upped the quantity a little bit. Okay. So that we wanted more people to be able to get them. Exactly. So if you want it, it's here. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering if we should go visit Rachel, who's with us this time. 
come back and visit with us after Rachel though. Um, but it's really nice. She actually has some nice weather recorded, which was good. Yeah. And uh, yes. Good for her. <laughs> it's good for her for sure. Um, so go enjoy Rachel, but come back and we'll finish up showing you what else is in the shop. Yeah. And we have another prize winner to announce too. Mm -hmm. Hello Willy Thistlers, it's Rachel from Barkland Croft here in Fair Isle. Well, after the summer that never really arrived, we've hit autumn and we've actually been getting some days of quite nice weather. Uh, the temperatures have certainly dropped a bit, um, but it's been lovely to see the sunshine and have some settled days of weather. Here you can see Blossom and her son Seraph. Uh, making light work of the re remains of a broccoli plant that had bolted. Uh, they seem to find it really, really tasty. Despite trying to keep the broccoli to themselves, the other sheep soon heard about it and it very quickly became a bit of a free-for-all. <laughs> but you can see how much they all enjoy it and the lambs too. With the autumn equinox every year we manage to get some gales that come and this year was no different. Sadly the gales snapped one of my sunflowers that had been growing but it still continued to bloom. We've been fortunate enough to have some really beautiful evenings just lately and it's been a real pleasure to stand outside and watch the harvest moon rise. It's not a great photo, but hopefully you can see just how bright it was. This was another glorious evening where it was lovely to see a little sliver of crescent moon in the sky. It also felt really autumnal for the first time as there was a kind of mist hanging over the fields. After the gales, we had a couple of days of sunshine and showers, which meant rainbows. And I couldn't have asked for a better view whilst doing some fencing repairs. It's also that time of year when we start to get lots of mushrooms popping up in the fields, and I love seeing all their different bright colours. We get quite a lot of puffball mushrooms growing. This is what they look like when they're alive and growing. Then they get a kind of leathery skin to them, turn brown, and are filled with these dust-like spores which blow away on the wind. I've also been busy building a new hen house after the last one was demolished in gales some time back. I managed to salvage the base from the old hen house and surrounded that with three pallets and then cladded the sides with offcuts of wood. A couple of layers of empty feed sacks on the roof will hopefully help keep the rain out. I used some offcuts of old metal corrugated roofing panels to go on the top and was able to reuse the old door even though it wasn't the best fit. Once it was finished, I was quite pleased with it. The only problem was the lambs were all quite pleased with it too. And for a while, it became a little bit of a lamb house rather than a hen house. I got two new hens which came in on the boat from Lerwick. But when they arrived, they were so wet and bedraggled, I wondered if they'd actually swum here. Thankfully though, by the next morning, they dried out and seemed a lot happier. I kept them shut in the house for a couple of days, then put some scaffold netting round the old polytunnel frame, which gave them a small enclosure that they could get to know for a couple of days. After that, I introduced Bluebell to them, 
who's my one remaining hen. That's Bluebell just there. And these girls are called Mrs Ruffles, who has the white ruffle. And then Sylvia is the other one. They had a couple of days living in the enclosure and hen house with Bluebell. And then today I've let them out for the first time, seen as the weather's quite nice. Bluebell's run off to please herself, but these girls seem really happy, apart from being chased by a couple of the lambs. I recently knit myself this slipover on my knitting machine. The cones of wool that I use come oiled to help the wool glide through the knitting machine. And one of the things I love seeing is when you've washed an item and the oil is removed, you can really see the changing colour between before and after washing and the colours now really pop. There were a few questions from viewers that I didn't get to answer in my last video, so I'll do those now. The first one is from Fan in California and they ask, is there a point in time where they can't wait any longer to shear the sheep? And how do they handle the fleeces if they are still wet? Well, they're great questions. Um, to start with your second question first, um, we can't clip or shear the fleeces whilst they're wet. Um, that's why this year it took me so long to get through shearing all of my sheep because we just had such a wet summer um, and it took ages for the sheep to dry out each time. So unfortunately, if they're wet, we can't clip them. We have to wait until they dry out. Um, and really, because our, our winters tend to start quite early here, um, October would be, or sort of early October, would be about the last time that we'd clip any sheep here. Um, but that would be very much the exception to the rule. Normally, certainly for our croft sheep, um, you'd be clipping uh, sort of June, July time. My next set of questions come from Karen H and these are all regarding the hill sheep. So I thought I'd put some footage of the hill sheep in. The first question is, what happens if a yow pushes away her lamb? Do you keep the lamb and return the yow? So the hill sheep will all lamb out on the hills themselves. We don't um, sort of interfere or really monitor them um, other than doing the hill rotor checks every day during lambing. Um, so if a yow pushes away a lamb we wouldn't know which yow that was that's done it. All we would find is a lamb on its own. Um, in which case if the lamb was still alive we'd take it and uh, bring it down onto our croft. The next question is if a yow leaves her lamb once, do they tend to repeat that behaviour? That's a really interesting question. I honestly don't know. Um, typically, if a yow pushes away, rejects her lamb, it's generally because she can sense that there's something wrong with that lamb. Um, and what you will find is probably in maybe up to about 50% of cases, where we find a lamb abandoned by its mum on the hill, bring it back to the croft, do our very, very best to look after it, bring it up to full strength. Sadly, in a lot of cases, it just doesn't survive. There is something just wrong with it that, that we can't sort of see or figure out um, and it doesn't make it. So I can't say no, they don't repeat that behaviour, but potentially if they had another lamb that had something wrong with it, then maybe they would. Um, and the next part of that question is, do you not let her breed anymore? Um, well, with the hill sheep, we just don't know which lambs come from which yows. So if a yow had abandoned a lamb, we, we wouldn't necessarily know which particular yow it was. But it wouldn't necessarily 
speaking about the croft sheep, that wouldn't necessarily stop us breeding from that sheep. It would just maybe mean that there was something wrong with, with that lamb. That was why she rejected it. The next question from Karen, again regarding the hill sheep, is do you all share the profits of the fleece? Right, <laughs> long-winded answer to this one. Um, until last year, it used to be that you, each croft had a share of 20 sheep on the hill. So I had 20 sheep on the hill that were mine, that I was responsible for clipping. Those fleeces then came to me and I could either keep them or essentially do what I wanted with them. Um, but I would always put them out um, to Jamesons of Shetland along with the free fleeces from my crossbred sheep. Um, and so I would get a profit from those at the end of the year. However, last year, the powers that be decided to reorganise the whole system. So no one now owns any sheep on the hill. They don't belong to individual people. They're a community asset. So we no longer kind of clip our own sheep. We just clip any sheep, regardless of who they originally belonged to. All of the fleeces are put into kind of collective community sacks, sent out to the mill, um, and then any profits that come back from those will get put into the Grazings Association Fund and are used to pay for things um, like medicines, um, dose, that kind of things that we would normally be sent a bill for for the year. My final question is from Ruth. And she says she's curious about the purple markings on the sides of the lambs. Well, these are just numbers and their only purpose is for when the lambs are very young, it helps me identify which lambs belong to which yows. So if they get separated, I know I'm putting the correct lambs back with the correct yow. We're almost at the end of September and a couple of days ago I took all of my fleeces from my pure Shetland sheep. So that's 100 fleeces in total. Um, that's a combination of last year's clip and this year's clip. And they got taken down to the pier and were going out on the boat where they'll be stored in the shed at Gritness, um, ready for me to pick up next week. And then I begin my journey to take them over to Uist Wool out in the Hebrides. And I'm really looking forward to sharing some of that journey with you next time in my video. But for now, I'll leave you with Blossom looking ever so pleased with her broccoli. Well, thank you, Rachel, for yet another wonderful postcard. Love seeing Blossom. Blossom has so many fans. It's great. And her chickens. She's so good with her chickens. I know. <laughs> so, um, it was really nice to see that she got some sun. Uh, yes. I felt a little bad that summer. Yeah, summer's short there and winter comes early. Yeah, 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 for sure. I, I love seeing sheep rock in the background there. That's definitely yeah. a, a landmark. Uh, on that little island so yeah thanks Rachel we love hearing from you and I know that you uh, had a visit with my mum as well since we last talked uh, so you're taking your yarn down to you as you mentioned that at the end so we will catch up with you next time yeah and uh, join you on your adventures to us that's awesome mm -hmm. I can't wait to see that I know um a quick little uh update, update. <laughs> could not remember the word update um that we've recently restocked silent night and the west yorkshire spinners christmas, christmas sock yarn. yarn yeah the holiday sock yarn because this this was out of stock for us we couldn't get it but it's in now and yeah. so you can get it either by the vault or in this lovely six pack yep all sparkles up here yeah sparkly yarn and they're adjacent contrast colors contrast colors. i just wore my vintage tinsel socks this weekend they're so nice <laughs> i have to be careful though because if i take them off and leave them out my sock my cat will literally drag it around the house. oh bless it's because they smell so woolly yeah it's a compliment really. it's really a compliment um but these <laughs> are back in the shop yeah and of course west Georgia spinners is a really good sock yarn workhorse sock yarn uh 25 percent yeah. nylon in it uh 100 uh british wool though and uh of the wool is 
100% British wool. Yes. Yes. I um, I brought in my candy cane socks. Oh, there they are. I thought that they would be fun to show for yes. people who didn't see them. That's how we would be. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I knit these a couple years ago using the candy cane colorway, which it's so Christmassy. I have favorites, but it's still my favorite. <laughs> um, and I couldn't stop knitting them, so I knit. Um, Knee, Actual knee high. stockings, yeah, yeah, knee high stockings. We have a oh, picture of so you good. somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure I can find the photo. We can yes. insert it there. But they're so good. Yeah, you wear them under boots. Was this one one ball? This was one ball, and I still had some left over. That's ridiculous. So I did use. I don't think it was milk bottle. What there's the milk bottle, one? and there's. Uh, it's no, I can't the, remember. It's the creamier. Yeah, of white. the two. Yeah, um, and it matched perfectly, and I did a nice. Um, yeah. Nice long ribbing and short and toes. Heel. What happened there? Cat. Oh, cat got at it. Yeah. I'm telling you, they like the woolly wool. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not careful, they do. I can take a crochet hook yeah, and pull it back. You can in, fix but, it. Yeah. Um, so much fun. Yeah. So much fun. And, I love it. Uh, they do get worn quite a bit and they're just, they wear so well. Yeah. Nice and soft. Yeah. And good so, with boots too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They do often go under boots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is sort of a shame, right? I need like clear boots. <laughs> well, you you actually need felted uh, shoes with the little turny up toe. <laughs> like an elf. You are you're a little shop elf. In fact, the Packers have often referred to themselves around the holidays as shop elves, which is really mm -hmm. fun. Um, we we want to encourage them to dress up. Oh, yeah. That would be good. Yeah. Well, we've been talking a lot lately about needing to have a Meet the Team page as well. Yeah. So we're going to work we're on, that. on that. Um, so we have these beautiful bags in stock now. Um, this one is calling my name. It's it's blue. It's so good. Herringbone. But it's got these gorgeous other colors going through it. Really, really nice. Of course, these are made for us by Studio Tolsta. Nice contrasting zip on this one too, really pretty. Mm -hmm. And these are our sock pouches. Um, and it's got this lovely brushed cotton on the inside, so it's very soft. It'll hold a sock project or maybe a small shawl. It's got a lovely little woolly thistle label on it. And of course it has the authentic Harris Tweed Authority label, which you can only get when it's authentic Harris Tweed, which mm -hmm. these are. So I wanted to show you these quickly, just some of the colors. Um, this is the purple and these zippers are really good quality. Mm -hmm. um, I like this one. This green talks to me a lot too. Should have one in every color, Maggie. Oh, yeah. I love this. This makes me think of Chanel for some reason, like, you know, those Chanel jackets. Yeah. Yeah. Very cute. I bought my sister a pink one. Did you? Yeah. Oh, you're such a good sister. Uh, I have this one in this gold yellow. I love it. You can find it anywhere. Yeah. Same with this and one. <laughs> I've been surprised how much I can sort of jam in my... <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're not. They're, like, it's I've like got, a TARDIS. I've got two sock projects in there. Really? Um. So together, they're each 50 gram balls. So together, yeah. it's probably... Actually, no, one of them's 100. So it's probably 150 grams easily sitting in there with two sock whips and a uh, printed pattern page. Wow. There you go. I mean, yeah. we all do that. We yeah. all stuff things. They're they're gusseted at the bottom, which and is it's, nice. It's it's. I'm still able to navigate the bag. It's not like packed to the gills. Yeah. So um, can you close it? Nice, yeah, I can close it. No problem. And it's cool. Just lovely. I have the teal. Yep, that's the teal. Which is beautiful. A herringbone. Yeah, yeah, it's just lovely. Yeah. So I think there's seven colors all in, mm -hmm. and these are selling really well thank you if you have purchased i'm seeing people actually buying a few of them and i think yeah. oh those must be holiday gifts for friends yeah. or family or just for your multiple sock whips. well yes you know i think or i think hats yes or mittens or a small shawl or yeah. shawlette yeah 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 very useful very useful and also it doesn't have to be knitting whips yeah you could you know if you have a little paint set or something you like to do painting yeah or, or little weavers mm -hmm, tools um, and things yeah no, very... I have a bunch of stuff I use for spinning, too, that's often just sort of... Yeah, around. Yeah. Yeah, so very useful as well as beautiful. Very happy to have these again. Thanks, Maggie. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what else we have. Um, oh, we wanted to mention some books. Shetland Wool Week is here. It's a gorgeous cover, isn't it? it? Really I love that is. project. 
It is. Even the back, everything about it. Um, mm -hmm. When they came in late last week, and Grady and I were both like, ooh, yeah. ooh. Um, yeah. It's just, it's so good. Oh, what a dummy. <laughs> Oh, another one of our knitters in the, the cow. Yeah. She knitted an Alfida, I think. Mm -hmm. And then she knitted her dog an Alfida. Oh, it was also, gorgeous. Oh, so oh, look. Oh, look. What could that be? <laughs> it's the woolly thistle. Um, yeah, there's just so many good knits in here on top of all the articles. And, and the photography. Yeah, it's just gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah, really lots, lovely. Lots to knit. Yeah, the Sherman Bull Weeks Annual is always a treat for sure. Oh, look at that. I know. That's what I was trying to find that. Oh. Yeah. Really nice. Oh, so really pretty. nice. Uh, I think Donna Smith has a book coming out. Did you see that? She does, yes. We'll need to see if we can get it. Yes, I can email her. Oh, good. So we're working on that oh, if you're no, interested. No. Yeah, we got a number of emails. Like the minute, um, <laughs> the minute it went live, we had, I think, DMs and emails saying, are you going to have this? We're going um, to try. We're, so we're, I don't know if she's wholesaling, but it looks like a gorgeous book. So we'll try. If we can, we will. Yeah. Basically. For sure. Yes. Yeah. So that's that. And we also so have. These are in stock and shipping now. Yes. So uh, thank you if you pre-ordered with us and now you can actually buy it yeah. live as it were. And we'll get it out right to you. Yeah. Then also newly released is, is more at issue three. Um, and this is a beautiful crochet magazine um, published out of Edinburgh. Yeah. And I just love that she's doing as many garments as she is with crochet. Yeah. That's just it feels and it uses she uses really special. beautiful yarns yeah. and um beautiful photography. Yeah. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. Definitely. I like this sweater. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's in now. That is in the shop now. What about Radical Threads? Radical Threads is in the shop as of today. Their latest issue, their new issue three. Um, I love arrived. this on the back. I know. So good. Very lovely. So, um, yeah. They're Lots smart with really their good. font. Their font's quite large, so I it's know. easy to read. Those of us of a certain age, <laughs> um, I appreciate larger fonts more yes. and more. Yes, same here. Um, yeah, and this has some, um, in addition to nice patterns, it also has um, recipes. Yep. Um, this one, the theme of the is occult and some of the recipes are Baba Ganesh. yeah are a little daring <laughs> um but yeah, yeah it's a beautiful issue and um yeah we're happy to stop it different articles yeah. so we're yeah. glad to have it here in the shop and it is available now knitted kalevala no nope. knitted kalevala 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 i don't know we haven't had the audio yeah, I haven't ledge. heard it yet, no. and I don't know enough about the tradition. I know it's based on a, um, like, Baltic, traditional, yeah, traditional Finnish. Baltic Finnic mythology, but I don't know how you say it. Kalevala. Kalevala, we'll go Kalevala. with. Kalevala. Um, Kalevala. The patterns look amazing, and it's by Jenna Kay. It's published by Lina. The patterns um, are beautiful, and she's using a lot of yarns that we already yeah. stuck, which feels lovely. Yeah. Um, so we are working on kits for those. We so are. So keep your, keep your eyes out. There will the, be at least a few. Yes, and the kits will be with or without the book because we know many of you have purchased the book and then you're going to want to knit something. So yeah. you'll be able to buy just the yarn set. Yeah. So Knitted Calabala is on pre-order now. It does not release until early November. So, so tenter hooks. But that gives us yes. time to get our ducks in a row and yeah. get these kits. And the preview pages are on Ravelry. So if you want to go and look and see which ones you might want to knit. Yep. Um, we, we're help, happy to help you put something together as well. But we are working on things. So yeah. keep an eye out. Yeah, it's a beautiful book. She is a really, she's a designer to watch, I feel like. She's doing a really nice. Yeah, I think this, nice, this book is gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other book headed our way that I think I want to just knit through cover to cover is Sark by Kate Davies. Always. I am yes. so excited for this book. It's not even funny. I keep asking every day, is it here? Is it here? <laughs> it's not here yet. <laughs> so, as what a about Monday it? recording, but <laughs> what maybe about by Friday. <laughs> So you're excited. Then. I am so excited <laughs> for this book. I don't know what it is. Like <laughs> Well, Kay Davies. All her all her designs are always stunning. And First of all, yeah, Kay Davies is just a she is But this amazing. one's got me chomping at the bit in a way that 
Um, I don't know why. It's just it's it to, right time. to you. I think it's it just I could wear all everything. Of it. Yeah. Um, and they all look fun to knit too. Yeah. So yeah, um, it's it's. Well, we see some Kate Davies in your future. There's I some think. Kate Davies, especially they're all knit too with like DK weights. Yeah. So um, I had spun. Uh -huh. Um, I've spun a bunch of, I think it's Shetland roving and, um, I think I'm right on track. I started gauge watching the other day. Nice. Um, so we'll see. All um, right. But yeah, I think too, it would look really nice in the strict garn. Yes. And yeah. It, uh, or in the, the junction fiber mill, we have no shortage of DK weight. Yarns no, we love here. DK. So yep. I think it's just going to be me and Kate Davies for a little while. <laughs> Sounds okay Although to me. Although I'm a multi-whip person, yeah, so it won't yeah. just be me and Kate. Yeah. But yeah. I'm um, feeling the need to get my ducks in a row. And I, you know, I'll be completely honest with you. I think all through this summer, I've been a bit, my knitting has been a bit challenged, I think. Mm. And I think it's probably just, you know, what I'm going through in life right now is yeah. sort of setting me a little off kilter. But with the fall coming and the leaves changing and the cooler weather, I think I'm feeling the need to sort of, get an idea of what it is I want to knit and be a little mm -hmm. bit intentional about the next project. Yeah. Like I went stash diving this weekend to just sort of get a lay of the land. Like what's in here and what are the things that I actually purchased that I want to make? Like I had yes. bought Kate's um, inkling book. Yes. Gorgeous. And there's a couple sweaters in there. I have the sweater quantities already. Right. And I noticed this weekend, all of my knitting, I have to be pretty present for. So you need some so mindless. So I need some mindless. So I actually might swatch and cast on one of her sweaters where it's just miles of stock in it. It's so good. I love that. Um, because then I can just, I can bring that to Ryan back and just yes. be going round and round. Yes. Yes. Um, and yes. Then, exactly. And then save the, the, you know, the more thoughtful knitting for yeah. when I have that. It's really fun. Space. I'm feeling the excitement that a knitter should be feeling at this mm -hmm. time of year. I mean, I am yeah. an everyday knitter, as are you. We knit all year long in hot weather, in Florida, anywhere. Right. And But there, but then it feels even more elevated and exciting when you start to feel the nip in the air. We had frost last night. I know. And I had to scrape the car a wee bit, and I thought, ugh. And then I thought, whoa, here we go. <laughs> I need to get my ducks in a row so I yeah. think I'm going to spend some of you know a couple of nights this week just you know looking I think I want to do something shifty and yeah. figure out what else I want to get on the needles and get into it so yeah yeah, yeah. the nice thing about the shifty too once you get going with any of the shifty projects it's pretty it's mine. easy going. Just keep going. I think the the night shift is that that big show we had mm -hmm. on from um yes yeah, so yeah that'll be fun yeah I think so I never used to be, sorry, I'm feeling the need to talk. Maybe because you've been talking the whole time. <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> Maggie is chatty. I'm chatty. It's chatty Maggie. Maggie. <laughs> I've got my knitting. It's cool outside. Let's go. <laughs> I never don't remember what I was going to say. It was never that important. Anyway. If you remember. If I remember. I think what I was going to say actually is shawls are calling me right now. And I never have been a huge shawl knitter, though I have knit quite a few. Yeah. So I don't know what I mean. But I'm feeling but that. But you've really been knitting a lot of sweaters. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, maybe I just need to sort of clear the decks, knit my shawls, because gauge doesn't matter as much with that. And take a wee break from the whole gauge issue, although I am going to look at that. Yeah. But, you know. I. But I think you need something else, too, that can I do. sort of be soothing. Exactly. While you're While I deal that. with that. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's very emotional. You know, we, we, we have to look after ourselves. That's what I did when I messed up my Defiant, was that I ripped it back, and then I'm like, I'm going to cast back on. But I cast on something that was just, all right. Easy peasy. <laughs> Let's just go round and round for a while before we hop back on. Exactly. Exactly. Maggie, let's announce our second winner of the show. Is there anything else we need to show off? I think we've shown you everything. I think we've shown everything. Yeah. I mean, there's tons more, but we've shown everything. We pace ourselves. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, no, I think that that's it. All right, well, here we go then. Let's announce our second winner. And then we're going to go to Kim, who is doing some yoga. Mm -hmm. this She's episode. doing a stand-up flow, so get ready to... Yeah, get ready to get on get your feet. Get ready to get up. Put your knitting down and um, get on your feet. <laughs> so our, our second winner today is Cheryl Bratton. And Cheryl says, I love if it's itchy, it's not cold enough. 
Me too. All the yarn is calling my name, especially the blacker. Knitters oh. are loving this time of year, anticipation yes. of cold weather and yes. being cozy with all the wool. Yes, the she house. she is absolutely expressing the same feelings that we're having. Yeah. We're all feeling that. Yeah. It's so exciting. So Cheryl, email us at info at the woolly thistle. Put winner in all caps in the subject line so we can see you right away yeah. and get you your prize. Yes, and if you would like to be in the running next time for a $25 gift card to the woolly thistle, just give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to our channel and leave a comment and we pick them at random and we hope that you are a winner. I think we're yeah. all winners though, just yeah. by being knitters. We're natural winners. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Well, Maggie, I think that's everything for this episode. Quite a long one looking at the time. Mm. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Well, listen, I think all that's left to say is if you go out. Take your knitting. Bye. Hi, Wooly Thistlers. It's Kim here with Yoga for Knitters with another episode to get you moving and your juices flowing. This is going to be a standing flow, so I want you to get up off your seats, put your needles down, and get ready to move. Okay, we're going to start this short movement break with our feet wide apart and our toes angled outwards. Go to 45 degree angle. And we're going to move with our breath so that we can get all the little kinks out and be ready to be better afterwards. So in your mind, prepare yourself. Say, I am going to do this short yoga movement break so that the rest of my day goes better. Are you ready? Here we go. Start with your hands at your sides. Legs wide. Feet at 45. Ground yourself into the earth. Close your eyes. And then inhale your arms up overhead. Good. Exhale, bring the hands back behind your head and then push the wall away from you. Imagine that the walls are right close and you've got some tension. And this allows you to get some stretch through the forearms. Good. Inhale the arms up again. And then we're going to exhale and reach over to the side. Just like that, nice side body stretch. A little bend in the knees to be supported. Inhale the arms back up. And then we'll reach to the other side. Beautiful. The hips don't move. The whole movement comes from the side body. Inhale the arms up once again. And then exhale. We're going to fold all the way forward. All the way forward. You can bend your knees if you want to, but get your fingertips to the floor. Alternatively, I don't have anything here, but if you had a block or a book or something to bring the floor up, that would work too. Okay, so left hand is now fingertips on the floor. We're going to inhale and twist just the upper body, reaching up to the sky. Exhale, bring the right hand down, fingertips to the floor or block, and then twist the body up to the left. And exhale back to the floor. Good. So from here, I want you to wiggle the legs a little bit, wiggle the legs, and then come into a slight bend. And you're going to reach all the way up. Imagine you've got some pizza pan hands and bring them on top of your shoulders. Good. Yeah. This is position number one, pizza pan hands. Position number two, straighten the legs. Straighten the arms, fold forward and swing the arms back. This is drinking birth. I'll turn sideways and we'll do it again. Ready? Pizza pan hands. It's a little squat. And then straighten the legs. Swing the hands back, drinking bird. So you're going to go through those two movements a few more times. It's a bam. Drinking bird. And then one more time, bend the knees, pizza pan hands, and squeeze yourself all the way up until you finish with your hands up overhead. And then float them down at your sides. Okay, you got the movements, you got the rhythm. Let's do this. Here we go. Inhale the arms up overhead. Exhale behind your head and push the wall away. Inhale the arms up overhead. And then exhale, reach to the side. 
Inhale the arms up overhead and reach to the other side. Inhale the arms up overhead and exhale, fold forward, bending the knees if you need to till your fingertips touch the floor. Left hand stays on the floor. Inhale, reach all the way up toward the right. Exhale to the floor. Inhale, reach all the way up to the left. Exhale to the floor. Bend the knees, set it up. And then inhale, pizza pan hands. Exhale, drinking bird, straight legs. Inhale, squat down, pizza pan hands. Inhale, straight legs. One more time. Exhale, squat down. Inhale, straighten up. Exhale, squat down. And inhale, straighten all the way up. Floating the hands down. Good. Shake it out. You can repeat this as many times as you want. Or if you're feeling really good, really nimble and flowy, and pick up your needles and keep on knitting. Thanks so much for practicing with me today. We'll see you next time. Namaste.